Yes, okay. yes. All right. Glad to hear you. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. So now we are going to start another session and we are almost over this week. So we are going to begin with the uh, class or the session for today. So we are going to see the document and we are going to, let me see, yes, this one. Um, now we are going to talk about the imperatives. Um, yesterday we were talking about the gerunds and the um, infinitives. Now we are going to talk about the imperatives, but in this case, we are not uh, just talk about the orders or some things that we want someone to do for us. In this case, we are going to use the imperatives to give suggestions in context. So, Vamos a ver los imperativos, pero no como una orden. En este caso, no los vamos a ver como órdenes, porque sabemos que los imperativos son órdenes que a veces se dan. En este caso, vamos a eh, utilizarlos para dar eh, como eh, consejos o eh, propuestas o algo por ese sentido en un contexto. So, we are going to start. And we are going to write the uh, context in which we are going to use the imperatives. So we are going to use them for giving suggestion in context. It says that the imperative is the form of the verb. We used to give directions. Also, we used imperatives to give instructions, suggestions, or advice. So now we can see that the imperative has different uses, not just one. In this case, we use the imperative to give directions, uh, to give instructions, to give suggestions, and to give advice. We have four uses for the imperatives. Also, and this is the most common uh, function that the imperative has, that is that we also, use it to give direct orders. Maybe this is the most famous use of the imperative, but in this case, we are going to use them to give uh, suggestions, to give advice, also to give directions and to give instructions, not just order. We have a lot of uses for the imperatives. So. It says that the imperative is easy to form. It is not something complicated to use. It is uh, something really simple to form. And how can we form this imperative? We simply use the base form of the verb. So that's simple. We just need the base form of the verb to form this imperative. So in this case, we are going to learn how to use it. Uh, we are going to see some examples about uh, this uh, imperative form and uh, how can we use them for um, give advices or suggestions. So in this case, we have the imperative is very easy to form. It's simply uh, the base form of the verb. And we have some examples. We are going to see the example number one. So let's 
do this because we are going to mark like a list. So we are going to have three different examples that are very simple to understand when we are using the imperatives. The number one is sit down. In this case, we are using it for order, sit down. In this case, this one at the beginning is the verb and that is the base form of the verb. We don't add anything. We are not applying the, uh, the rules and we are not uh, creating gerunds. We are just using the base form of the verb. Then we have a stand in line. That's another example. And we have here the verb stand. That's the base form of the verb. We are not changing anything. Stand in line. Then we have this one, fill out. So in this case, we can say, ah, it's a phrasal verb. Yes, it is. Because they uh, are unsuperable uh, phrasal verb because we use them together. Fill out this form. So we have here the verb. So we have in uh, this moment, it's very simple to understand how to use the imperative or how to form them because we're using just the base form of the verb. And in this case, we are using the, um, the imperatives to give some kind of, uh, some kinds of orders because we are saying people what it's going to do. So that's very simple because we already have the, um, the knowledge because in Spanish, it's also, we have, um, we also have these imperative forms because we uh, learn everything about the imperative form when we are learning Spanish in the school. So that's not really hard to understand. Then, we have another uh, information about this. It says that to make in the imperative negative, place the word do not or don't in front of the base form of the verb. So, negative form. To make the imperative negative, we are going to place the following words. do not or don't, that is the construction. Do not or don't in front, in front of the base, ver uh, of the base form of the verb. So, that very simple that we just add something to the sentence to make it negative. We are just going to write don't or do not in front of the verb to make this sentence negative. So let's see, we have some examples. Example number one, do not sit down. Do not sit down, simple. The same expression, but in this case, it is negative. Do not sit down. We have here the negative part that we are going to mark with red. Then we have the verb that we are going to mark it with yellow. So we have the structure here in the negative form we are going to use do not in front of the verb. Then we have another example that it says, don't touch, don't touch that button. Don't touch that button. We have here the negative part of the sentence. 
the verb touch and the complement in this case. Do not touch that button. And the last one, don't forget. Don't forget about the party tonight. Again, we have the negative form or part of the sentence. Then we have the verb forget. And we have the complement. Don't forget about the party tonight. Simple, very, very simple. Eh, con el imperativo, ya estamos viendo que no solo se utiliza para dar órdenes, sino que tenemos diferentes usos. ¿Cómo lo formamos? Utilizando el, la forma base del verbo. Simple as that. And to make negative statements using the imperative, we just need to add do not or don't in from of the verb. Para formar los negativos, simple como lo más simple. Solo agregamos do not or don't en frente del verbo que estamos utilizando para hacer nuestra oración imperativa. Y eso es todo. No necesitamos agregar más cosas. Simple, simple, simple. So, after knowing how to form the um, imperative uh, sentence and the negative sentence, we have um, some uses of the imperatives. And the first one, that we are going to see, it's using the imperative to give instructions. So we are going to know how to use this imperative to give instruction of something specific. We are going to imagine something. Your boss may use the imperative when he gives you instruction at work. He or she may say, work on this project until lunchtime and then go back to your regular work. A cookbook uses the imperative as well, the in the recipes it contains. And we are going to divide this example. First one, your boss. Estamos hablando de nuestro jefe en el trabajo. Y tenemos la siguiente oración. He or she. may say, and we have the first a part of the imperative, work on this project until lunchtime. And then go back, that's the, uh, the other part of the imperative, to your regular work. So this is the first example. In our work, uh, our bosses um, tend to use the imperative to give instructions. It is not like an, a specific order because when we are talking about uh, imperatives, we tend to, to think the this kind of order are like very hard and we can feel bad when people say something using the imperative because it is that kind of voice that we are going to make to give an order. But in this case, when someone is giving instructions, uh, we use another uh, kind of um, tone of voice. And in this case, when we are working, our boss tell us uh, something that we need to do. In this case, we have the example that this uh, person say to another, work on this project until lunch time. They assign something for that person and she or he has to work in that project. And uh, the boss give some time to do that action. Then it says, and then go back to your regular work. That is very simple. That is not something that we can say, mm, he's been rude. No, in this case, it's something very easy to understand because we are going to work on that project until lunchtime. That is my time to work. And then when I finish, 
the, um, the work, I need to go back to my regular work. Maybe um, I work with numbers, I work with uh, researches, I work with medicine, I work with people. Then after uh, ending my uh, project, I have to take my, um, my normal work in that moment. So that's very simple. They assign something to us and we have to do it. Then it says that in the uh, cookbooks, in the libros de cocina, we also have imperatives. And in this case, in the books, we can uh, say that someone is being rude because we are reading something. So in this case, we're going to use the imperatives to give instructions for something specific. And we have the other example. We are going to uh, write like that cookbook. And it says uh, in the recipe, it contains And we have here the example. We have measure one cup of flour, one cup of flour, put in a medium size bowl. Then we have blend, but don't over mix. So in the textbooks, or in this case, in the cookbooks, they uh, help us to follow a recipe because we are going to make something to eat. And they have some steps. And in this case, these um, are uh, imperatives because they are giving instruction how to do the things. Uh, measure one cup of flour, uh, measure two cup of water, put in a medium sized bowl, and then blend but don't over mix. Maybe you can say uh, add two tablespoons of salt. Um, let it, uh, maybe we can say also, uh, you have to use almond or a uh, milk or something like that. So in that case, the uh, language that it's used in the cookbooks, it can be uh, imperatives because they are giving us instructions and they are using the verb to explain something to us. So. We have two examples in the word and in the cookbook. We use the imperatives. Then it says an owner's manual uses the imperative when it tells you how to do something. The manuals for something uh, electronic, for the computer, for the TV, for the refrigerator, uh, for everything that we have, they use imperative uh, language. So also it's are part of this, um, this uh, section of the imperative because they are giving instructions. So we have another use that is the owners. And we have some example of these imperative forms in the owner's manual. So it says to change the ink. In your printer. First, open the 
the door indicated on the diagram. So in this case, we have uh, some specific instructions to change the ink in our uh, printer. So it says, first, open the door indicated on the diagram. That is the imperative because they are saying us how to do it. And the first step is to open the door indicated on the diagram. Then it says, remove, that is the imperative, remove the empty. And we are using simple words to say something. And we have those verbs. Then we have replace. That is another a verb that we are going to use in the imperative form. Replace it with a new one. And the last one, it says close the door. Something simple that people can understand when are, they are doing something or changing something. Not a lot of words, but simple words that can help the uh, owner to change anything in their electronic uh, devices. So those simple words that help us to change something, it's imperative. So in this case, we have three things here in the instructions in the work, then we have uh, also in the cookbook and then in the owner's manual. Tenemos tres cosas en la de eh, dar instrucciones, ¿verdad? En el trabajo, cuando nuestro jefe nos da una instrucción de qué debemos hacer, en los libros de cocina, donde nos dan las recetas y cómo debemos hacer las recetas, qué paso seguir, y en los manuales que traen nuestros eh, aparatos electrónicos, o incluso cuando estamos armando algún eh, mueble, también es imperativo. Then it says, the imperative can be very forceful when you are angry or when you are giving a direct order such as in the military. So we are talking about this, that when we eh, use a different tone of voice, it can sound very rude. And in this case, it says that it can be very forceful when you are angry and you are giving these uh, instructions like orders. And the most um, used example is in the military because they use that tone of voice when they give instructions. So when we say, don't lie, but when we are angry, don't lie like that. It's imperative, but it can be very forceful. Stop talking. When someone is talking and we say, stop talking, but in a, a tone of voice that is very uh, high. Then forward, march, but they say in another word, in another voice, I mean. So in that cases, they can be a very um, forceful or rude for someone. But in the military, they are very, um, they know that they have to do it like that. Then we have another use of the imperative. You see in the imperative to give advice. So in this case, we are going to give advices using the imperative. We are not just giving instruction. We are going to use uh, the imperative to give advice. So it says, we also use the imperative to give advice or suggestions. 
In this case, we are going to write like that. Right here, suggestions. Because we are going to use it in the same way. To give advice and to give suggestions to someone. He or she is not uh, required to do as we say, but we think it will be a good idea. And we have some examples. In this case, when we are giving advices or suggestions, people um, maybe do not do the things that we say, but that's the point because we are not giving an order. We are giving an advice that someone can consider. And if they do, that's something good. And if they um, prefer not to do it, that it's the decision of that person. So in this case, we are just giving something to help the people to understand or to um, think better or a situation. So we have the examples. It says, you are ill. Go to the doctor. Here we have the imperative. But in this case, we're seeing something in that person. And we say, mm, you are ill, estás enfermo. Go to the doctor, ve al doctor. That is a suggestion or an advice. And that person can think, mm, maybe I am ill, but I don't want to go to the doctor because I don't really like go to the hospital and I don't like to take pills and I don't like to um, use that kind of uh, medicines. I'm going to uh, go to my house and then I will uh, sleep all the, um, the afternoon and then I will uh, feel better. But that is a option. In this case, we are talking about options. We give options and that person has a, another ones and they can think what is the better option to do. So in this case, we have a, just to give an advice and that person maybe will take the, the suggestion or not. Entonces, para las, eh, para las sugerencias ¿verdad? o los consejos, Nosotros damos opciones de consejos, opciones que pueden ser tomadas, pero la persona va a decidir si lo hace o no, porque básicamente no es una orden, sino un consejo o una sugerencia. Then, we have another example. Deposit your paycheck. Now, so that you can pay your rent. Deposit your paycheck now so that you can pay your rent. That is another suggestion. And the verb that we are using to form the imperative is this one, deposit. Then we have another one, make sure Make sure you get your car So in this example, uh, that is very uh, common to tell to people that have a uh, cars, it's make sure to get your car serviced before you go on a road trip. In this case, it's to uh, see if the car is okay, if all of the, um, the parts of the car, uh, maybe the oil, uh, the gas, or something like that is not missing, and uh, there is everything okay in the car that we can um, prevent an accident, so in this case, this is very, very um, common. And some people take this uh, suggestion or advice because they need to do it 
because it is something um, really important when they are going to a, on a road trip. So in this case, it's talking about our car and to see if everything is okay with it. Then the last one, don't take her too seriously. This is negative one. Don't take her too seriously. She gels at everyone. We can say that in this example, we have a negative connotation because the people um, is saying, don't take her too seriously. No la tomes en serio. She yells at everyone. That is not a good action. So we are going to see just as an example. So in this case, it is a negative form of the imperative. Don't take her so seriously. She yells at everyone. That's just an advice not to um, see that something bad is happening because she acts like that with everyone. It is not someone is special when she did something like this. So we have the examples there. If we want to add emphasis, we often add the word just. In the case that we are using the imperative and we want to emphasize, we often, Add the word just. And it says we have the example just do it. Just do it. Solo hazlo. Just do it. This means stop wasting time and do what you promise. Stay, stop wasting time and do what you promise. And in this case is to emphasize the um no in this case it is not like that. We can form a question because in when we are uh, using the, the questions it is not like we are giving an advice because we are uh, Yes, in that case, you can say like in the first, can you go to the doctor? In that case, it is not an imperative because you are asking and trying to uh, get a response. And, and it, in this case, it is not a suggestion and you can do it in question because you have to do just the sentence because it is not like, a, for example, in the military, they don't ask people to do something. They say that they have to do it because in that case that you are asking, um, it's something like soft that you have a, oh, I don't want they to feel bad in that case, but in the imperative, it is not like that because you have to do is, uh, the actions. And maybe in this case, when you are giving advice, uh, it is an option. But in the instructions, you can ask because it is not the point. No podemos eh, hacer preguntas con esto de los imperativos porque eh, no es como que nos vayan a dar una respuesta o, o, o que esperemos una respuesta o que queramos que eh, digan, ah, eh, lo voy a considerar porque aquí estamos tratando de que se haga algo. Let's see. Why don't you go to the doctor? In this case, it is not like an advice. It is a question, why? We can use this question when we say, ah, you are ill, go to the doctor. And the people say, no, I don't want to do it. Why don't you go to the doctor? What is the problem? Are you okay? You are afraid of uh, doctors or you don't want to take your medicines. But in this case, it is not an imperative suggestion. It is a question in which we want to receive a response. So in this case, it is not imperative. Así que no nos podemos hacer las preguntas porque no vamos a recibir una, una respuesta, sino que in this case, cuando queremos hacer preguntas es porque necesitamos una respuesta, pero no tiene que ver con el imperativo.
Okay, then it says, just seeing, just seeing, just seeing right here. In this case, we are going to see something in, in, in this sentence. When you say, just seeing right here, solo canta aquí. When uh, someone know that some people can sing and sing very well, the people tend to say, do it. Do it here because people want to hear you. So in this case, this sentence is like that. Just sing right here because people want to hear your voice. And this means you only have to do that, um, that, that thing like that. And then we have another one. And it says, all you have to do is just sign right here. We have another example with this. In the first one, sing, it's uh, like uh, the voice and the other one is sign, like uh, firmar in the other example. All you have to do is just sign right here. When you are doing something, uh, Legal, they say, all you have to do is just sing, sign right here. You have to uh, do one thing and nothing else. That is sign, put your name or something like that. That is in the legal way. So we have sing and we have sign. But sing is use your voice and sign is to put your name in documents. Then, how can we soften the imperatives? We have uh, a part in this topic with, that is soften the imperative. ¿Cómo podemos suavizar el imperativo? Porque ya hemos visto que el imperativo es algo fuerte. That is something hard. That is something um, that we tend to think it is something bad because someone is giving us orders. But in this case, how can we soften the imperatives? So it says the imperative can be very uh, direct and forceful. Sometimes it does not feel very polite. And we have some words and expression we can add to make it softer and more polite. So we are going to uh, see how to soften the imperatives. Softening the imperatives. It's like improving the imperatives, something like that. And we have some words and expressions. We have number one, you can add please. This is um, something very useful because in that case, when we are uh, giving an advice or uh, giving an instruction, we can use a, or add please, and it helps to soften the imperatives. Let's see. Just run away. Yes, that is an imperative. Just run away. Es como escapa o corre lejos. It's an imperative because you are giving an instruction. That is correct. So in this case, you can add please, and we have the example. It says, please sit down. And we have, please don't make noise. So in this case, when we have this, uh, please, in front of the, the sentence that is imperative, it change a lot. For example, when if we just say sit down, people can say mm, this person is saying is is angry because she is saying sit down and that's all. And she is angry and she wants us to sit and be quiet. But when we say please sit down, it change because we also change our tone of voice. Please sit down is like an invitation to sit down. Then please don't make noise. It is not the same when we say, 
don't make noise. Don't make any noise. Maybe the person is angry, it's busy, it has something to do, has a meeting and say, don't make noise. That's something like an order, but in this case, please don't, uh, please don't make noise, it's something uh, soft. Then we have another one, adding let's. Let's. So we are going to see the example. Let's see. Let's see a movie tonight. Vamos a ver una película esta noche. Let's see a movie tonight. It is not just to say, go and see a movie. Go and see a movie. That's like an order and I can say, but I don't want to see a movie tonight. But in this case, let's see a movie tonight. And it is uh, talking about two or more people that are in the room. Let's see a movie tonight together. We are going to see a movie, but in this case that someone say, go and see a movie, it's not very polite. Then we have another one. Let's not forget our ID cards. Let's not forget our ID cards. Let's not forget our ID cards. No, vamos a, no, no vayamos a olvidar nuestras identificaciones. Then we have another one and it says, why don't we? Why don't we? And we have some examples. Using uh, the example of the, um, the movie, we can say, why don't we see a movie tonight? In this case, we can use, but using this phrase, we can use the question, but when we are softening, uh, when something is soft, we can use in that moment, the question, but to make soft, but not in the other cases, just in that specific moment. In the other ones, we can uh, use uh, the question, but. In this is like an, an invitation, I was saying, and just in this moment, we use the question, but in the other ones, we can do it because we are uh, trying to um, uh, have a, a positive response in this case. And we say, why don't we see a movie tonight? But if you can see, we don't have another action before this question. Para esto de la pregunta, no tenemos una acción antes, como lo teníamos en la de la sugerencia. No es alguien que esté enfermo, no es alguien que esté triste, no es alguien que esté trabajando. In this case, is that I want to see a movie with someone else. And I say, why don't we see a movie tonight? That's all. And it says that, this lo looks like a question. Let's see, this looks like a question, but it's used idiomatically as a suggestion. It is not a question. It is a suggestion. It's something about the idiom, the, the, the language, but it is not a question, right? No, it's that I am asking for something or for someone or for whatever I want. In this case, looks like a question. That's very important looks like a question, but it is used idiomatically as a suggestion. That's not a question, and that's simple. Again, we have another way to use the uh, this part that is like a question, but it's not a question, it is a suggestion. And it's why don't you, that is almost the same. Why don't you? These are uh, 
see as suggestion, nor questions. And if when we uh, search for this information, it will be the specification for these um, uh, phrases that they are uh, seen as a question, but in this case, they are not. They are just suggestions. But it's for the, um, the words that we are using that it seems to be like questions. Then it says, I have the other one that it says, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. And we have the example. It's a good idea to live early. On a snowy day. It's a good idea to live early on a snowy day. In this case, we are saying that it's something uh, good that we can live early, not we are going to say live early on a, a snowy day, live early because maybe the people is enjoying the, um, the day and someone says live early and the people will say, but I am feeling well, why I have to leave this place? But in this case, it is a good idea to live early on a snowy day, a specific information of when we can live early the place. Then we have, if you can, if you can, si puedes, call me, call me tonight, if you can, or if you can, it is a polite suggestion. And it says, call me tonight if you can. Llámame si puedes. Come visit me if you can. Uh, go to the, the supermarket if you can. There is a polite suggestion to do it something for us. Then we have um, imperative in some common traffic words and expression. Um, it's uh, talking about uh, the uh, traffic and the uses of car, but there are a lot of common words used in that situation. We have some examples here. We have continue. And we have the example. Continue for five miles until you come to the highway. Torn. Just torn left at the second street after the traffic light. Keep going. Keep going until you pass a shopping mall. Take a left and right.
and it says this means to join or take uh, one of the weights. Turn left or right. Then pull over. You need to pull over when you hear a sign. And the last one is a loud down. Always a slow down in a school zone. So these expressions are very uh, common for the people that use uh, or drive cars, uh, buses, or all of the things that they hear these kind of expressions when they are uh, driving. In the first one, we have continue for five miles until you come to the highway. Sigue por cinco millas hasta que llegues a la carretera principal. Then just turn left at the second street after the, tra the traffic light. Es cuando tenemos que girar, ¿verdad? Hacia una de las zonas cuando veamos la, el semáforo, ¿verdad? Then keep going until you pass a shopping mall. Cuando nos dice, siga, ¿verdad? Adelante hasta que llegue a una zona específica. Then take a left or right, tomar uno de los dos caminos. Pull over, you need to pull over when you hear a siren. Es movernos cuando escuchemos una sirena. Then slow down, always slow down in school zone. Tenemos que bajar la velocidad cuando lleguemos a una zona escolar. Then, you know how that we use the imperative to give direction, suggestion, and advice. The imperative is the base form of the verb. We can make it negative, however, by adding don't in front of the base form of the verb. We can also soften it, make it more polite, but adding such word as please, let's, and some more. And that's the end of the topic of the imperative uh, words or the uh, imperative sentence. That is very um, simple because we need that we are using the uh, base form of the verb to make imperative uh, sentence, to give advice, to give instructions, to give um, suggestions. And we can uh, make negative just adding don't at the beginning or in front of the verb. And that's all the things that we need to know about the imperative um, sentence that we are using. So that's the, the end of this topic. Then we have another one that we are going to just uh, see the beginning of this topic because it is almost, almost time to end the session. So we are going to start with the next topic that is, um, this kind of topic is something that we really like in our life, or maybe not. It depends on the on the people. But we have the next topic that it's called celebration. Celebration, and we are going to uh, talk about vocabulary. So we are going to say celebration vocabulary. Maybe we celebrate something. Uh, we can celebrate some uh, specific dates in our daily life. And that's very good. Tell me, Sandra, do you have a question? Yes, is it correct to use uh, the auxiliary do with let's? Let's do it. Yes. Oh, well, but... When we are, are making a negative uh, sentence. Just don't do it. Solo no lo hagas. Let, no, no, let's, let's not forget when he says, let's not forget, uh -huh. but we cannot say, let's don't forget. Mm, I think it is not incorrect, but uh, I think it's uh, more uh, comfortable to use not in oh, place okay. of don't. Because in this case, when we are using let, 
-hmm. it's the way to soften the imperative. And in oh. this case, it is not just do it negative. It is just soften. But in this case, when you were using the negative in this kind of softening questions or uh, sentences, I mean, um, we are just going to, to say, let's not uh, forget our ideas. But we can say, let's don't forget. That is not uh, something that we can use it. That is not the, the, the case. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. So, celebration. We celebrate something in our lives. I think that we can celebrate our birthday. We can celebrate New Year's Eve. We can celebrate uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day. Um, we can celebrate something else that we uh, want to celebrate. We have different kind of celebration in our lives. So in this case, we are going to create a vocabulary of words that are very common in this kind of situation. And we have the first one, it's obviously the first word that is celebration. And we say that in Spanish, this word is celebración. That is the main uh, word in this topic, celebration, celebración. Then we have another word that is very common and we already know what it means. That is birthday. Es el cumpleaños, ¿verdad? Then we have celebrate. Que es celebrar, no es celebración, es celebrar. Then we have birthday party. Birthday party. Es la fiesta de celebración del cumpleaños. Then we have Christmas Eve. New Year Eve. Also, also. Christmas Eve. In this case, es cuando tenemos, ¿verdad? Eh, que ya está cerquita, ya está cerquita la Navidad, Christmas Eve. Then we have another one that is Easter. What is Easter? Semana Santa. Yes. Uh -huh. Another, another, uh, another way to say Easter. Pascua, yes. Pascua. But in, in our uh, country, we uh, don't celebrate the Easter in the same way as, as in the United States uh, because they yeah. have that celebration when they have uh, bunnies, they have eggs of chocolate, they have some uh, kind of uh, a specific uh, celebration, but we can do it in our way. So in this case, it's Pascua or cuando caen las vacaciones que nosotros conocemos como Semana Santa. That's okay. All right. Then we have another one that is an um, anniversary. Baby shower. Oh, the, we have the baby shower. That is a very uh, discussed uh, uh, words because they say, what is the meaning of baby showers? El baño del bebé? Or what? <laughs> and, and, and all the people think, what is the meaning of that celebration? Because we are celebrating that a baby is coming, but baby shower? That is very, very funny to see the, the, the reaction of this word. And maybe tomorrow we are going to talk about this uh, celebration. If you see or you know something about the name of the baby showers, we can share the information tomorrow. So think about the name of this celebration and think it is accurate for the celebration or not. And if you know something about the baby showers, we can talk about it tomorrow. Now, we are going to have just these words and tomorrow we are going to 